watching AYV Television. Yes, in the program is weekend review on AYV Television, Channel 33. We want to apologize for starting the program this late. Um, however, I meet your home of credible, factual, and balanced news all time, AYV Television. Samuel Ibrahim Kuruma is my name. And we can review as always, takes a look at our major stories that are published during the week. And we do bring together civil society activists and also journalists to critically discuss um, you know, them. And uh, you can be a part of the program simply by following us on our Facebook page, where you can drop your comments, questions, and contributions. But we want to plead that your comments, questions, and contributions are related to the issues that we're discussing in the program. And the studios this morning with me is Festus J. Lai, who is a journalist. And um, he has been helping us in analyzing issues having to do with the countries. Development. First of all, it's always a pleasure having you. Thank you very much. Good morning. And I'm also expecting Kadi Jatu, who is um, working for Sky Women's Seminary Network. But however, we take our first bite into this edition of the program, for which President Julius Marabi has allocated over 4 billion loan to the COVID-19 safety net for employees in uh, several loan tourism and hospitality sector. Well, the net launch um, was uh, held at Radisson Blue hotel in Freetown, where well, let's uh, take a look at the story. In spite of the negative impacts caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and the tourism sector being the hardest hit, the government has taken a significant step to support people in the tourism sector with social safety net program to get through these extremely tough times. Minister of Finance Jacob Jusu Safar says the essence of the safety net is to enhance workers to maintain desirable living standards. The essence of this is to enhance these workers to be able to maintain desirable living standards. So the Minister of Finance together with the Minister of Tourism and back on wide range of issues consultations and there, which will be explained by my colleague, Minister of Tourism. But the Minister of Finance provided all the technical backstop that is required and facilitated the, the, the disbursement of the resources for this program. Dr. Memuna Tuprat in a statement says the president has again took a major step to revamp the tourism sector from the shock of COVID-19. We are here as a result of our president's desire and commitment to ensure that some safety net support is provided to members of the tourism and hospitality sector. This is because the processes and procedures put in place to collect the data on the beneficiaries have been multifaceted. I must also say that those who are benefit benefiting today are the institutions that responded to our call after so many challenges. What we did as a ministry to advise on the Ministry of Finance and the National Tourist Board was to work through the Hotel and Tourism Association in ensuring that they get all their members in soliciting data on all their staff within the minimum wage. But what is in this package for the hospitality and tourism sector? Based on the data collected, I'm therefore pleased to announce that my government has allocated four billion eight hundred and eighty-three million eight hundred and forty thousand millions to the hospitality sector as a social safety net which being support. It means that for those who registered, every person will be getting one point eight million millions. It's a three-month compensation package that will serve a total of 2,363 workers in the hospitality sector. Thanks for Lubimetska, Ivinos in Freetown. And I can see the excitement on the face of President when he was announcing <laughs> the, <laughs> when he was announcing the total sum of money that is involved in this project. When, and mind you, I think um, from the looks of things that if first off it's three, it's for it's for um, uh, three months. And however, it's, I think it falls within the, min the minimum wage of um, 600,000 within the Republic of Sierra Leone. First off, what does um, this mean for the hospitality sector? What will you say with regards to that? Uh, it means a lot, eh? Um, the other weekend, we are here discussing about the market women being subvented by government through the donor support that have been coming from our international partners, you know, to help, you know, um, mitigate the, the hard suffering of um, the market women. Today we are talking about the hospitality. Who are those people involved in this hospitality the president actually outlined? That 2,363, you know, 
Sri Leoneans who have been working in the tourist sector and of course the media sector respectively. Because when you talk about tourism, you don't forget about the entertainment sector. So now, um, this money is going to be allocated to DJs, those that have been playing music in clubs and um, on radio stations, you know, um, those that we are laying off in some hotels, uh, bars, you know, um, you know, generally club, pubs, you know, across the country. What happened was that um, according to the, the, the executive director of the tourism board, Madam Fatmata Kruma, she clearly outlined how this money was going to be disbursed to the sector. She explained that one, they have a data of those who comply. Initially, they requested for the hospitality sector to you know, present a list of their workers across the board to them. So the hotels, the, the motels, you know, the guest houses, the clubs, the bar, you know, the DJs we are requested to actually submit names. So those who comply are going to benefit. Again, like the market women, as we speak, there have been a lot of hear and cry all over the place with regards to who is to receive the money and who is not. So according to the tourist board uh, 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 director, she said they have collected that data. They waited and waited. Some didn't absolutely comply. So as a result, they are not going to benefit out of this money. Because I think that's where the contention lies. You know, how was the selection process done? Mind you, also, you also made mention of you know, those who are the market women, for which we've seen people who are not market women, who are not even involved in that sector, benefiting from this money. Some are even saying the manner at which um, you know, the, the, manner to which the, selection, the selection was done is um, based on you know, political affiliations. Some politicians are using it to say, OK, this Nami people let them for receive this summer whatsoever, first of all. Are we expecting to see a similar thing in that of um, the tourism sector? Uh, it's difficult nowadays in Sierra Leone to actually see people accepting something to be reality and genuine. As long as it didn't favor them, they are going to cry foul. I mean, um, if the city council in Freetown has been involved in the fair distribution of the market women's money, it means all political parties is involved. Now, who is actually using the money for, for political gain? Is it um, those people distributing the money? Because according to the president, even in, this, in, in his speech at uh, the Radis Blue Hotel, he clearly spelled out that this money is meant for Sri Leoneans who have been badly affected by COVID-19. Irrespective of one, your regional background you are coming from, two, your political affiliation, three, um, where, whether the sector you have been working as, whether as a DJ or as, as whatever. As long as you have met the requirement of having this money, this money should be allocated to you. And according to the Minister of um, Tourism, Madam Dr. Memona Tuprat, you heard what she said clearly, that um, they have got the data they needed. Again, like I rightly started, a lot of them are not going to benefit out of this money because they failed to do what they were asked to do. I mean, um, if you want to work at um, uh, AYV, firstly, you have to apply. Secondly, you'll be called for interview. So if you fail to come for interview, I mean, you will not expect Grace to take you for that job. So that's how it was done. They requested the hotel owners, they sent them letters, according to the tourist board uh, uh, director, Madam Fomata Kuruma, they sent those letters to them right across. And they have been waiting, waiting, waiting. So those who, I mean, uh, um, um, uh, comply, I mean, they have collated the list. They know exactly how much each and every one we receive from this money. And of course, they have decided to you know, distribute the money evenly according to what she said. So I'm very, very much happy that uh, one, I mean, not like the, the Ebola that affected Sri Aliens without having such... Um, but, but I, 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 th I think it's not time for us to go back to... No, you know, well, we I, th I think it's not time for us to go back to what occurred you know, during um, the Ebola scourge in the country. However, the long and short of it is the fact that I think government has considered them because we know they are amongst the, the, the sectors we consider badly hit in the country. By the COVID, of I mean, course. Let me, let, 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 let's meet our Sharina, you know, Khadija, who was just joining, joining us in the studio. I think she was, <laughs> she was held bent by the <laughs> race, <laughs> yeah, the race. Yeah, Definitely. Kadija, it's a pleasure having you. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Yeah, of course, we're discussing, I mean, this is having to do with the allocation of over 4 billion units to the um, tourism and, and um, hospitality sectors of Sierra Leone that was done by the president, Kadija. Just your take quickly as we move on to another issue.
Well, uh, to start with, yes, I, I read some of the article yesterday in the newspaper, even though I've not done my own interview or so, because sometimes they say you say things that you know. Definitely. But as I say, you know, I'm very sorry for this because I came in running like <laughs> yeah. the voice and all of that. I'm very sorry about this. But of course, um, we just hope and pray that um, the money that have been allocated, we surely go or the right people can right. benefit right. out of it. Because Sierra Leone, that is our culture now. Sometimes they will tell you that um, this is for disabled people, Definitely. but you see people pretending to even be disabled <laughs> when they don't want to be disabled, you know? So looking at all this, all I can say for now, okay, we've heard about it, but now we are hoping that at least they give this money to the rightful beneficiaries so that they can benefit from this because it's not like the president is happy about what is going on, but it's because of maybe the sympathy and so on. We all know how the COVID-19 have affected people, even though it has even affected us. Definitely. But I must say we are not the most vulnerable no, they, they, because we, we are still walking and then, not, you know, all of that. You know, that. we're risking our lives. I would exactly. Say. We, we are risking, risking our, our lives, lives. but we are not the most vulnerable. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, we have people that hardly do it right now mm -hmm. during this COVID-19. We do have them. We go out to communities. We see them. There are people, you know, they, we are petty traders, but now they are not going to the market anymore because there is no money. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, if you are spending 20,000 leons per day, and then all of a sudden COVID, you know, you're not going to sell anymore, and then you start eating up your, your, your money, then how can you continue to go? So I think these are the kind of people that they should be looking for, mm -hmm. the most vulnerable people. Okay. Um, I, I think the, the people they, they must be looking for, the most vulnerable, as you rightly said, Khadija. But however, I mean, now we move on to another issue. And um, the photo of a building in Freetown, which looks dilapidated and might collapse, if not rehabilitated, went viral over the over last few days. Well, with people calling on the relevant authorities to take actions and address what could possibly be a potential disaster within that community. However, our reporter, Mohamed Bakal Kama, went to the scene and filed in the story. Standing tall, looking very old and abandoned, on the crowded Hegan Street in Freetown, this building that is housing hundreds of people became a social media sensation recently from the public who are raising concerns for the well-being of inhabitants. Aminata Bangura, owner of the house, who herself is not residing at the building, says the rehabilitation has been stalled due to the rains. Sitting in the comfort of our other house where she resides, while her tenants live in danger. Aminata argues that the building in question is the strongest in that vicinity, sounding as if there is nothing to be worried about. Because our brother and sister too, in Africa they say tenants, they are ready for support because they know how we hold it. And they are ready for support. And they are ready for support too. And today the old woman they are ready for support. If the place where they pull up to one for them, it will mean they will see life they go there and left them and it one. Housing in the capital Freetown is still a very serious challenge. The residents who refuse to speak on camera say they are happy and comfortable with where they are staying, with less to think about the potential danger. All efforts to speak to the Freetown City Council proved futile. For AYV Primetime News, I am Mohamed Baka Kamara, reporting in Freetown. Yeah, just an excerpt from what you know the lady said. She mentioned that the house is semi, you know, it's more, it's more stronger than, than all the other houses within that location. It's not so, it's not, you know, it's, it's, this is not a laughing issue, Festus. You and I saw the house on social media, and according to the lady, she's saying from, from the report, Mohamed Bakal mentioned that the lady, the lady was sitting at the comfort of another house, and then she allowed us to live in a house that many people will say is a dead trap at the moment. Um, Festus, let me start with you. Um, it's pathetic that uh, such story is coming up and it's good that uh, thousands of other houses are within the municipality of freetown 
you know, sitting on the same time bomb like this one. So I think uh, it's that time now, you know, the environmental aspects of this country start looking out for these kind of houses and see how best, you know, they could try to salvage the situation. Again, it's difficult to have a comfortable dwelling house in the city like this one, especially for the low earning income people. And so, like you rightly heard from one of the tenants, that they are very much comfortable, in fact, living there. I mean, you don't compare that house to uh, a pan body kind of house, <laughs> you know. So you rather prefer you be there, even at the expense of uh, your own very life. I tend to defeat it. <laughs> no, well, pass, pass, pan body, pass, <laughs> you don't have some pan body. Well, you know, the, the, the thing is, even if they want to leave this place now, we have to really secure another That's house. That's another thing. That's another thing. Again, this, the, the, we are, the house is situated, it's right at the middle of Freetown. So now, if you could leave this place and have a place, right, let's say, by Jui, and you are doing a petty trading, so you have to pay transport upon transport before coming to town and do your trading, so which means your profit has to be divided into transportation, and you have to take out of that money to eat. And you know for sure we have a lot of single mothers in this country who are taking care of their children. So they are highly involved in this petite getting. So they would prefer actually to pay a little sum for such dwellings, you know, have their children do their business and of course pay their fees and college fees respectively and be feeding them at the same time. So it's pathetic. We only pray that, um, you know, the environmental aspect of this country will actually go and see how best they could tighten up the foundation of the building itself so that our serial leaders will continue to dwell in that house. Uh, the, the other day we saw a release from uh, Freetown City Council, you know, taxing house owners within Freetown to do A, B, C, D, and E. And uh, another statement came from the ministry saying this is not the right time. I think those are, those are, I think those are strides, you know, um, yeah, the city towards council, this, the council itself this move direction. It but however, yeah. Khadija, you, 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 you saw that picture on social media and thankfully YV did the story on that, you know, on, on that stuff and you heard from what the, the house owner is saying and even the tenants that they feel comfortable living in the house, Khadija? Well, um, to start with, I must say, as far as I'm concerned, my life is very important, no matter how poor I am. But I take my life to be as the most important thing so far. So I saw the house on social media, and you heard um, what the reporter said, surely, that even the house owner is sitting in another house, dwelling house comfortably. That tells you that even she respects her own life. And she loves herself very much. Because if not, then she must have been living in that same house. So sometimes I, I yes, it's true what Festus is saying. It's all about poverty again. And then you moving there, going to another place. Yes, it's true. But again, Festus, I mean, no matter what happens, but you have to try instead of you risking yourself. You're risking your life. Dwelling in that house, I don't even mind going to... You know, how do they call it to stay with another person for some time? When you have. Well, no matter what happens. And I think city council, of course, they, as they have likely said, they have picked on that. But again, they have to do something about that. This concerns um, more than 20 or so people living in that house. I mean, if that house collapsed, nobody is going to think about poverty anymore. Mm -hmm. They are going to say, oh, no, I caught them people will be out for no better. I mean, they're not Again, they that they will by cast now. the responsibility on government. That is why I'm saying government agencies that are responsible, let them go and tighten the foundation. I, I think this is all part of, I mean, you know, the, the, the work of uh, the, 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 the city the, council. Not only city council, but even the metro department. The metro, the, the um, agency, environmental yeah, the agency. Of course, yes. this is all part of their job. Because in some countries, before even you erect a house, at some point in time, they will even go and check and see the status of the house. And, uh, you know, as you earlier mentioned, if a disaster occurs there, no one will be even thinking of you know poverty or whatsoever. Exactly. They, they will, will, will not be thinking life, of the lives that may have. <laughs> and lost. our government could come into to cushion, again, the, to cushion the effect. A, you know, again, those these people may have been in the house for a very very long time. So along the time they have been staying in this house, you know, this foundation has been grappling down so let them know, move. gradually, and without taking proper care by the by the house owner or the landlady or the landlord. So now that it has been brought to the spotlight. Can government go in or the city council engage with the house owner and see how best they could pay their rent and then, you know, get a better foundation for the building? So, so how can the people be dwelling in that house and then all of a the sudden they try to get a better foundation for the building? So all I am saying here for the moment, at this time, I mean, they are not going to do it. In rainy one season, we this are the one those people We are talking about the rainy season. They can, they can run for their life. Where will you think they will go Well, now? no matter what happens, I was in Frita. I came in Frita. I had nobody here. 
But I have to live with somebody you, that I hardly even you know. You alone, and these people are family people. So, you know, we have to look at the dynamics in this. A lot of them are family people. They have two or three children, maybe with their mothers, grandmothers, etc. So if you say, let them move now, at this material time, under this kind of atmosphere, we are, the weather condition, where will you think they will go? What so, I am so, but first, is... First us, will you, would, you, would you want to encourage them to live in... Such, uh, uh, this is my plea. This is my plea. City Council or the relevant agencies involved, they can still be in that house. They, you know, they, they tighten the foundation so that, you know. They, but if you say now you move them, where are you going to relocate them as we speak? Well, to play devil's advocate here, another thing is that the fact is that now somebody owned the house. And however, the person has been collecting rent all, 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 all So let them go meet the person. Whatever. Let them go meet okay. the person. The best thing I think, So from what from what the reporter mentioned yesterday, I had a chat with him mm. when he was editing the stuff. I even had to laugh at some point <laughs> because, you know, we... I, I even had to laugh because the fact is that, you know, we, of course, you know, we bring out the agenda. We, we set the agenda for people, mm -hmm. so for public discourse. Of However, the, he mentioned that the, 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 household, the household and the lady told him that, you know, they've already bought some materials for, the, for, for rehabilitation. But however, what he saw was just one, one wheelbarrow, <laughs> one wheelbarrow materials. I was like, this is a big house. But however, I, think, I think the best thing I can plead for is to see how City Council can at least relocate these people for the time being until they take care of so the we house. And they, well, you have to prove a solution I mean, as well. We have it's buildings. Relocate. It's not yeah, like it's that not is the only house in Freetown. You don't go there. We have buildings. <laughs> I, I mean, first of all, anything can happen overnight. What True. if it rains heavily overnight and then these people, you know, they, they all lost so their lives. Look at what happened happen on the 17th. We pray it doesn't happen. And then we allow government government, you know, go to the landlady or Sometimes the landlord. Sometimes they say, God help those who help themselves. Now, if the program is Weekend Review on EYB okay. Television, but Channel 33, keep sending your views on um, your views, your comment thoughts and contributions on our Facebook page, Africa Young Voices Media Empire, or perhaps EYB Radio. Now, as we go along in the program, we'll have to go through them. we go for a short break, and we'll be right back. How Smith Sierra Leone is back with season two and a whopping cash prize of 250 million leons plus a full round trip to Dubai. Go grab a form now for 150,000 leons at any NYV and AfriSell offices nationwide or go to www.africell.sl or www.nyvnews.com to download the Housemate Sierra Leone 2020 form. Or you can fill and submit the form online along with a two minutes video. Tell us who you are. Show us your talent. Payment for forms should be done through AfriMoney on 0882010020. Deadline for the submission of forms is the 21st of August. But remember, successful contestants will be screened and tested for COVID-19. Keep the house safe and clean. House Met Sir Leon 2020, brought to you by AYV and AfriCell. Welcome back. The program is Weekend Review on AYV Television. Samuel Ibrahim Koroma is my name, and we go with the rest of the other stories. But however, um, just a few days after Sierra Leone's social commentator, Emerson Amidou Bokari, released his Nine Lives album, Sierra Leoneans, whom AYV caught up with on various streets across Freetown, have expressed a mixed feeling of lackluster on his album. And most citing Coconut Aid, which most people say speaks little of the realities on the ground. Let's take a look at the story. From where them born we, we day no more, we day way, just the way. Government they come and go and left we pan the bay, big the bay. Another generation don't come me sweep on the way. Welcome to the way, you will still not know say na boom bam boo you lay. Hey, you lay. Even though man them here I chirp and ult. When I say ult, I mean ult, 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 ult. All this is in them where they have not the country, we share the icon and ult. Holy man they not begin them back back to that feeling of being attached to love and devoted to one's nation are a key tenet of patriotism. The reactions from the public on M. Marcin's just released Nine Lives album seem a lackluster, with little excitement and low interest from the public. <laughs> Be getting interest because I'll not be listening. I'll soon know I don't listen. I'll not get interest because which I want for get from my way for 
music from this inside the song, can we get any? So I'm not getting interested right now for my. I mean, man, you couldn't tell me about the music, no better tell me about the music. So I'm not interested for listening to the music. Actually, so Emma say release song. And they, and they take the mind of the people, the, the, the crowd, they get at the crowd. But like this now, we release so I know, to me, not move me. Emerson Amidu Bokari, who goes by the stage name Ion Weno de Ben, is one of the few respected musicians within Sierra Leone. His lyrics that promoted social change and criticisms on corrupt activities of government have made him very popular in and out of Sierra Leone. His songs most times pinpoint the excruciating realities the general masses are entangled in. Songs such as Bobo Bele, Munku Boss for Matches, and Yesterday Better Past Today are still fresh in the minds of the people. The reactions are indeed mixed, as some believe Emerson is still the iron we know the bend. I know see Alexi, I'm not we on one side. I'm not we in natural, regardless of any part we come. And they talk for the people, of which they are putting to suppress the people. To me, which me know, officially take the mind back of the people. At this present time, this music is important. It can late for pulling song. That's nah, nah, number one. We, we don't listen them. Or it don't make no sense to we. What we able, we able educate we. But the way I go, the song, it drag, drag the song. Sales in the market, according to cassette vendors, is slow, but can't be unconnected to downloads on social media. But cool people they don't get on their phones them. So that's not going to be good again. I made the sales so slow for now because most of you don't in our media all man don't get them even though many seem to have ignored their overture to market the nine lives album politicians such as andrew kylie have commented on the song coconut aid through his writings on his ponder my thoughts column <laughs> efforts soliciting government response to the song coconut aid proves futile but the big question is whether Emerson is still the iron we know the Ben. Samuel Kuruma, AY Village, Yeah, of course, I think that's the million dollar questions by many civilians who might cut up with them on various streets across Freetown as to whether Emerson is still the iron. We know the band. Let me usher you in Festus, uh, July. Oh, uh, Festus. <laughs> of course, the, 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 the morning, the morning that, that I first listened to the song, I saw on your, on, your, on, your, on your status and even on social media, I saw many young people whom I know and whom I think they are my friends, I saw their postings with regards to the song. Uh, I think some are saying, you know, if you say, I'm not singing, sing, you don't sing, oh, now A, B, C, then E. But Festus, um, do you think he's still there, man, on the band? He's still there, very strong. <laughs> I mean, he has been never, <laughs> and he, he has, you know, been the voice of the voiceless. He has been speaking to heal, you know, situations in the country. And this is one person, actually, if we are to award three Alliance who have been doing due diligence to this nation, I mean, he deserves it. He's a musician. He has to do his trade, and it is out of this trade he earns money. He earns his living, so he has to continue, you know. I mean, you may say or you may think whatever you want to. But he has been speaking. You know, he started with Bobo Bele, like you rightly said, to Futa Rata. Yesterday, better past today. You know, a lot of people were not even expecting him to have come out this strong. You know, devoid of political affiliation or maybe his tribal background or whatsoever you think. He's in, I think he has been speaking to power. He has he have been talking. He has been giving his own view on situations across the country. And that he will continue. And we pray that he even continue to do. So that maybe where you think you have not done better, you will do best and you will do more than expected. It's just like, you know, when we are discussing situations here. Sometimes we speak because we want power to listen to what we are saying. We analyze situation. We say, okay, look at the building now, the, the, the condition of that building. It is only that AYV took it up, I'm sure, you know, before next week, government officials, the city council would have visited that place and see exactly what needs to be done so that they protect the lives of those serial owners that are living. That is what MRC has been doing and he will continue to do. And we pray that he continue to do so that he speaks his mind, 
you know, the reality people are saying he's hearing on the street. I mean, people, we are expecting MRC to have said a lot of things. Again, you have your own voice as well to sing if you want to. So you can write your own lyrics yeah, as to what things. you think so, 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 you want so, him to sing. So, so are you one among those Sierra that were expecting him as to say more than what he said? In no, his, well, I, I like, like you saw my, 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 my status, like I said, you know, I'm happy that he actually come out this strong so that those who maybe who are castigating him of being a politician will start to rethinking or rebranding their, mind, their mindset that no, Emerson is the same Emerson we have been known since he started his musical career in this country. You know, we want him not to, to probably to even not to join politics or join any political gathering or group in this country. Let him continue to speak for us, the Israel unions, the layman out there, like we are doing. I mean, we are all journalists. We are speaking the same what Emerson is doing. It's just that he used his only lyrics in a musical form so that while dancing, he has well listened to the <laughs> message. So are you amongst the many Israel unions he classified of, you know, be, uh, having been worked yeah. with their coconut I mean, he said Israel <laughs> unions generally. <laughs> coconut actually, I mean, and, um, if you listen, the really that's, that, that's just an answer. I think you know, I think one of the one of one of the people on that video, one man said um, that Emerson, you know, he came in, he, he, he came out very very late, and um, also, um, would you say he came out strong? Well, for some people, he came out strong, and for some. They were expecting him to say so many other things, as uh, Festor said. I also went to communities and then talked to people on their own view as per the album that Emerson just released. And some politicians were saying, well, this is a wake-up call. This is um, just where, I mean, Emerson have now opened our eyes to see where we are going wrong and then we'll start to amend sure, it. And sure. then some we are saying that uh, Emerson is still an SLPP according to the information that we got because they said Emerson did not say things like you know the album the last album during the APC season so that Emerson is an SLPP that's why he did not say so many other things they were even expecting him to talk about the chief minister they were expecting him to talk about other people but he did not now, and then look what were you expecting him to say <laughs> well I, I I was just expecting him to see the reality and say it and I think he saw some of it and say I mean his eyes are not all over. But you and know, even you, you, you as know, that... You, you, know, you, know, you know which part I like the music? Mm. One day I always say, if you say free education, can't say stamp. Exactly. Say if you, I just <laughs> like the lyrics. Yes, That's I, the I, I love that it's part not about also. politics also, but I just like that, that lyrics part the music. But again, but again, when you talk about coconut head, are we all coconut heads? No, me not get. God, good. So you see, it's, it's some kind of... I but Emerson generalized that word. <laughs> yes, he we said, are oh, all. He said, we, oh, that means every Sierra Leonean are coconut We are all coconut heads. Head. So including we have been coconut including himself, himself as a Sierra Leonean. So, so I think that was the key reason why, why I had so, so to So one want to say, <laughs> one that, want to say that is the reason why he came out late, because he's also a coconut head. Yeah, of course, he's he a coconut, coconut head. head. Maybe we are tired of thinking, we are tired of talking, we are tired of singing. But to be honest, all jokes aside, I mean, that that was an eye-opener. Surely, I mean, he has been singing, he has been uh, criticizing, you know, even the past government, even the late um, uh, former president, you know, he has been, yeah, of if, course, if you he listen, has been criticizing if you, if you listen So to if his, you listen to, to his the welcome lyrics, song, you know, when he says suspect, you know, he say, he say, if you think, say, the president, they can't play magic, don't be expecting, because those that have gone, left this country but in a very big mess. Emerson, you know, in Suspect. I'm not listening. That, that, that is, no, it's suspect, suspect is on the number 17th of the album. At, you at, know, at, I've at, listened to all the release. You get time for listening. I have listened. Uh, of course, yes. So the person name can play magic. <laughs> he said, if, if you the expert said the man, they can't play magic. He said, not to magic. This then, is the reality. Then, then, then when he mentioned, say somebody said within six months, everything will change. That is, that is the magic who Emerson is, was talking about. If you are that? talking about, say the man, they can't do magic, that is six month magic. It will not work. It <laughs> okay. takes time for let it work. Now I see your point. But however, I think I think um, um, this is where we draw the curtains down because oh, um, we goodness. don't have enough time. There are other programs that will come up after this show. But however, thank you so very much, Khadija, for your time and also Festus Jela because I know it again heavily. You That's know it again. Cat and dog out there. Yeah. Even me, I get for so come It's our job. And we get passion and love for this job. That's the key thing. But many thanks to my producers and uh, the rest of the technical staff, the rest of the technical team within this year. I say many thanks to you guys for the efforts. And um, thanks to our viewers and listeners on our Facebook page and also to our viewers and listeners across the Republic of Sierra Leone. Samuel Ibrahim Koroma is my name. Keep sending your thoughts.
via info at And this is you have yourself a splendid weekend. <laughs>